Let's take a look at problem number six from the worksheet that you did the other day, how many coins are in each bag. In problem six, we've got a picture that represents an equation and we're using coins and bags of coins. On the left side of the equal sign, we can count 21 coins that are visible, seven groups of three. We can see two bags of an unknown number of coins. We don't know how many coins are in each bag, but what I do know is that the number of coins, whatever they are, are the, is the same number in each of the bags. On the right side, I've got five bags of unknown coins, and I have three coins that I can clearly see and count. So what we have to do is find out how many coins are in each of these bags in order for the entire equation to be balanced or equal on each side. So we'll start by looking at the number of coins that we have on each side. If I were to take away these three coins, just cross them out, in order to keep the equation balanced, I'd have to take any of these three coins away as well. So I'm going to take away these three, and what that'll leave me with is now on the left side, I still have the two bags of unknown coins, but now I've got 18 coins on the left side that I can see. On the right side, I still have my five bags of unknown coins, and these three were, were removed, so I don't have any coins that I can see anymore. If we continue with that idea, now I see I can I see these two bags on the left side. I can subtract these two, and on the right side, I can take away any of these two. So I'm going to take away these two bags, which now leaves me with in my picture on the left side of the equal sign. Now I just have these 18 coins by themselves equals, and on the right side, I have these three bags with no visible coins. Since I don't know how many coins are in each bag, I can't take away coins from each side in order to keep it balanced. So I have to think a little bit differently. What I can think about is, what if I divided these three coins into three equal groups so that in each group there's just one bag? And since I divided the right side into three groups, I've got to do the same thing on the left side. So imagine taking these 18 coins and dividing them into three equal groups, which means in each group I need to have six coins. So we can now see that in each bag, in order for there to be three groups on the left side of six coins each, each bag has to have a total of six coins and we've solved our problem. The number of coins in each bag is six, and we did it using the picture. So now imagine taking the same problem and solving it a different way. Instead of using the picture, let's, use, let's do it a different way using a method which we're going to call the symbolic method. We're just going to use symbols in order to find the solution to how many coins are in each bag. So what we first have to do is represent the picture as a symbolic equation. And if we look at each bag here, we don't know how many coins are in each bag. So what we do is we're going to use a letter, and I'm going to use lowercase b, to represent the number of coins in each bag. Remember, we don't know what the value of b is, but we do know that each bag has the same number. And so I can use the same letter to represent the number of coins in each bag. By doing this, I can now represent these two bags in symbols by writing 2 times b. 2 times b represents the total number of coins in these two bags. I don't know how many coins are in each one bag, but I do know whatever that is. If I multiply it by 2, that's going to give me the total number. I can then write the addition sign because I'm adding that to 21 coins, which I can see and count. I remember to put my equal sign. And on the right side, 
Since I have five bags, I can represent that symbolically with the expression five times b. And since I'm adding that to three coins, I'm going to write three plus b. So that's the equation that we're going to use to solve this problem for the variable b. To continue with our symbolic method, going back to what we did a moment ago, we took away these three coins and we took away three coins over here and that kept the equation balanced. Symbolically, what we're going to write is minus three, which is the same as taking away three, and I line it up under the plus three because those are the three coins I started with, and I do the same thing to the left side of the equal sign. I write minus 3, and I line it up under the 21 because I took those 3 away from those 21 coins. So I'm now going to use what I call a separator bar just to keep our work looking neat to separate the, the step of subtracting 3 from both sides with the next step. So if I simplify this, in other words, if I do the arithmetic, I have 5b plus 3 minus 3 the plus 3 and the minus 3 go to 0. That's because we took these three coins away and there are none left. What I do have left is the 5b, so I have to bring that down in this step. And now instead of using the raised dot to represent times, I remember from algebra that it's I can save a bit of time by just writing 5b, and that remember that means 5 times b. I do want to put my plus sign there. I do want to put my equal sign. I want to calculate 21 minus 3. Well, that leaves me with 18 coins. And I can still see that up above by counting those. And I still have my two bags of coins, so that means I still have 2b. And I'll leave the raised dot out and write 2b. I'm still adding them so I'll put my plus sign. Remembering what we did earlier, I have two of these bags over here and I can take away two from this side so I'm going to cancel these two bags, I'm going to cancel two of these. Symbolically what that's going to be is taking away two bags is equivalent to subtracting 2b Notice I put it right underneath the two bags that I have right above it. And I did the same thing to the right side. I subtracted 2b from the 5b. That's what it looks like up in the picture. I draw my separator line because I'm ready to simplify to the next step. So the 2b minus the 2b, that again goes to 0. I'm not going to write that anymore because that's not changing the equation. But I still have the 18, so I bring that down. Those are the 18 coins from above. I remember my equal sign. And the 5 bags of coins minus the 2 bags of coins leaves me with 1, 2, 3 bags, or 3b. and I don't need the plus zero. Remember at this step there wasn't anything I could subtract from both sides to keep it balanced so what we then did is we divided the number of bags into three equal groups and we divided the 18 coins into three equal groups and symbolically what that looks like is I use a fraction bar to show division. When I say divide the three bags into three equal groups, that's equivalent to taking 3b and dividing it, showing that with the fraction bar, by 3. And I did the same on the left side. I divided 18 into three equal groups, so I divide that by 3. I'm not going to use a separator bar here. I think it looks okay to just do the next step. So 18 divided by 3, there's the 6 that we discovered earlier. 
don't forget your equal sign, and the 3b divided by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, or just b, because 1 times b is the same as just b. So my last step is to write that 6 is equal to b. This step here, you'll learn to, to just leave this out. It's not necessary to write the 1 times b, but it's always important to remember that's what just b really is. It's 1 times b. So our solution to the equation, b is equal to 6. Now I want you to try the other questions from the handout. Try using the symbolic method showing all of your steps. If you need to go back and look at the video at some of the steps again, you can start, stop, pause, and look at it as many times as you want.